This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. How to deal with uh, intraoperative meiosis? Dear friends, I'm sharing one such experience. This is a 70-year-old lady with pseudo exfoliation and a moderately dilating pupil. This is my posterior limbal incision and after staining the anterior capsule as I'm incising it I can visualize these mild striae which indicate zonular weakness well which is to be anticipated in such cases. And as I'm forming the rexus I can feel that I need slightly more force to tear the capsule because of the laxity of the zonules. In such a situation, I always prefer to do the rexus with the forceps. It induces less stress on the zonules and the capsule tearing is relatively easy and better controlled. Achieving good cortical cleaving hydrodissection is very critical in such eyes with weak zonules. But the nucleus doesn't seem to be freed from its capsular bag attachment. The first attempt is not good enough. So I repeat the hydrodissection again and I am compressing the nucleus both the ends to ensure that the fluid has passed through and through and also to decompress the bag. Well the second attempt seems to be successful. The lens is now free from its capsular attachments. The moral of the story is, in eyes with loose zonules, it is worthwhile to spend a little bit extra time to get the hydrodissection right. At this moment, I have decided to insert the CTR to stabilize the capsular bag. I begin by aspirating a little bit of cortex. I am injecting a small amount of sodium hyaluronate under the anterior capsule to create some space. Now I am threading the CTR under the capsule using a forceps. At this point I need to confirm that the ring is under the anterior capsule and not above it because in the smallish pupil it will be difficult to ascertain this fact later. I am using a Sinsky hook in my second hand to support and compress the CTR to prevent any stress being imparted on the zonules. Finally, the last part of the CTR is gently eased into the bag. As I begin with my FACO, I realize that the pupil has significantly gone down in size. I make a small crater and doing my first chop, which is unsuccessful. At this stage, I need to take a call whether to continue or to use a pupillary expansion device. I decide to go with the later. Well, simply I thought that it would be safer to use a pupillary expansion device which would help me to see a little bit better. I am using OVD both in front and behind the iris to lift it up a little bit. I am performing stretch pupilloplasty by using two Kuglin hooks. Care is taken that the hooks are not entangling the rexus margin. Again, I am using sodium hyaluronate under the iris to just lift it up away from the rexus margin before using the device. In this case, I am using the B-hex ring. I use a special forceps to the side port to place the two flanges of the ring ensuring that the four notches 
are engaging the pupillary margin well i have described the standard technique of mine to place this device in one of my earlier videos you can check that out the last flange is then manipulated through the opposite side port and now we have all the notches engaging the pupillary margin and we have achieved a decent expansion of the pupil to proceed with the surgery once the visibility uh, improves the surgery becomes much more safer and simpler After deepening the trench a little bit I get my first crack. Subsequently the nucleus is chopped into multiple small fragments and each of these fragments is aspirated at the pupillary plane. The basic principle of any surgery is to see well. So once we have this device in place, this one important aspect of surgery is taken care of. And then the surgery seems just like a routine one. The dispersive OVD is reintroduced to ensure minimal trauma to the corneal endothelium. Once all the fragments are removed, the BX ring now needs to be removed before removing the OVD. The biggest advantage which I feel is the removing of this device is extremely fast and easy so once the bx ring is out then we need to take care of the ovd the ovd which is in front and behind the iole is being aspirated out and that's it the case is done and we can see the pupil uh, sphincter damage is quite minimal when you're using this device to summarize this case highlights the fact that it's never too late to use a pupillary expansion device like the BX ring. You can always introduce this device in the later part of the surgery uh, in the event of an intraoperative meiosis. So pupillary expansion device do enhance safety in such uncomfortable scenarios. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.